What's going on everybody, my name is Jordan Fowler and today I'm back with another Atomos Ninja 5 video. Uh, so Atomos just released two new firmware updates for the Ninja 5, so I'm going to quickly show you what they're about, how to install them and how you can use them. So let's go. So last week, Atomos released two new firmware updates for the Ninja 5, that's 10.61 and 10.62. Um, mainly just minor upgrades and a few little fixes here and there, but the biggest of which on 10.61 comes with the ability to shoot time lapses through your Ninja 5, which is really cool. A bit later on in the video, I'm going to show you how you can actually install the new firmware update to your Atomos Ninja 5 if you haven't done that before, and then run through how you actually use the new time lapse features on the Ninja 5. If you already know what the release notes are about and the new features, then you might want to skip ahead to how to install it and actually use it now. So firstly looking at the Atomos 10.6 Watt and firmware update, um, if we scroll down to the new features, the biggest thing here is the new time lapse feature. And um, the beauty of this is it actually allows you to record time lapse sequences into a single video file which is really nice and saves you quite a lot of time in post-production having to put together a time lapse of images. The other great thing is it obviously allows you for super high res time lapses because you can record them in ProRes, DNX or ProRes RAW over the HDMI or the SDI so that's super high quality time lapses which is ideal. And much as you'd expect they've also given you the ability to change all of the sequence settings with in the time lapse, so you can change the number of frames, the intervals, the final play time of the time lapse, which is quite a nice feature. So there's a couple other noteworthy little upgrades and fixes that they've made in 10.61 firmware upgrade. Um, nothing too exciting, but we'll just quickly touch on them. So there's a new compatibility mode, uh, both over HDMI and SDI inputs, but it's only for certain cameras. I think they've specified that it's a Z Cam and the Canon 1DX Mark III. There's also some additional features if you're using the Atom X SDI module, which in a nutshell basically allow you to convert incoming non-raw HDMI video into SDI video and vice versa. So that's a nice feature if you're using the Atom X SDI module. They've also added the ability to record and monitor raw video over the SDI if you're using the Atom X module as well. However, it is worth noting that if this is something you want to do, you will have to purchase an additional activation key for this. This doesn't come standard with 10.61. Also, it is worth noting before you go ahead and buy that activation key, uh, this is only for some supported cameras so make sure you have a look at the release notes on 10.61 firmware update to make sure that your camera is actually supported before you go and buy the activation key. So moving on to the 10.62 firmware update, this is a much smaller update and doesn't really come with anything exciting like the 10.61 does. Um, there's been some there's been some minor fixes uh, to do with enabling the RGB parade and vector scope which had been disabled in 10.61 for whatever reason and there's also fixed some issues uh, where the Ninja 5 was not detecting 6k raw through the Z cam so so a few nice little fixes there that they mined out but nothing to get excited over. Um, the only real new features that actually come with this is for Nikon Z6 II and Z7 II users um, and that's that there's now added support for full adjustment of the white balance and ISO in post-production um, when you're shooting in ProRes RAW. However, I don't quote me on this but I think this is only if you're editing in Final Cut Pro that you'll be given a new adjustment slider. Um, but don't quote me on that. Uh, they also have stated that your Nikon Z6 II or Z7 II will have to have the latest firmware on that as well. So make sure your camera is up to date. It's always good to make sure all of your equipment is up to date. So make sure you're staying up to date with all the bits of kit that you've got and all the new firmware that's released because even if it's nothing too exciting it can always iron out some little bugs or fixes that are going on in the background. So with all the text being out of the way let's get on to the download and how you can download the firmware update and put it onto your Atomos Ninja 5 and then we'll take a look at how you can actually use the new time lapse features and if they're any good or not. So to get the firmware and actually get it installed all you want to do is head over to the Atomos website. I'll put a link in the description so you can get there nice and quick. And then once you're on their main page, you want to go over to the support tab up top. And then you'll be shown with this welcome to our support and head over to product support there. And then at the top here, we've got all the different models of uh, screens that Atomos do. You want to go on to the Ninja, Ninja 5, and then you'll see all the latest firmware. Um, now you don't actually have to download 10.61 and 10.62. Um, to get the time lapse feature and the latest bugs, all you need to do is download the latest one and that will come with all the previous fixes and bugs and features and stuff. So what you need to do is download the firmware update for 10.62, that's going to download a little zip file and once it's done, put it on the SSD and away we go. So once you've downloaded the zip file, you're going to have to extract the .fw file, then all you need to do is just drag that across to your SSD card eject your SSD card properly and then put it back into your Ninja 5. Then once you've got your uh, firmware update onto your SSD card, all you need to do is put your SSD back on the back, power up the Ninja 5 
And as you can see there, it says updating firmware, do not remove power or media. So literally all you have to do is just plug it in, turn it on, and it's gonna do the firmware update for you. Once it's finished doing its firmware update, the Ninja 5 is gonna shut itself down, so you just have to power it back on. Wait for it to do its ting. So now the Ninja is all powered up and back on, you've got your firmware update. All you wanna do is go over to your device settings here in the top left. And as you'll see, we've got this new swanky little time-lapse menu. Um, and from here, you can basically do all the basic functions that you would expect from any kind of time-lapse uh, feature. First thing you have to do is obviously enable time-lapse mode, and then that's enabled this playtime function. And that is gonna be the final length playing time of the time-lapse that you create. Um, and then you've got all your basic features that you'd expect from any kind of uh, time-lapse function. So you can change the amount of captures. Um, you can also change the units, how many seconds or how many frames, uh, every so many seconds or every so many minutes or hours. You can just, so you can set that how you want it. Um, and then you can set your runtime so you want it to run for that many minutes, that many hours or that many frames. Um, and so yes, yeah, kind of self-explanatory really. Once you've then got your time-lapse settings set how you want them and you're ready to go, um, all you have to do is close it down and there'll be a nice new swanky little record icon here that's red with kind of a light white dot background. Obviously there's no input at the minute because I'm got it plugged into a camera, it's just stood here on a tripod. Um, so yeah, you'll get a nice thing and then away you go, you can set it to record in, in your ProRes time-lapse. Um, it's a pretty straightforward really, but a nice little feature that they've added. So once that new jazzy little record button's there and showing up red, you can just hit that, show your recording, and you'll be recording some swanky ProRes RAW, nice quality time lapses, mate. So yeah, it's all good. So all in all, that's all there is to it. Um, nice, quick and easy little firmware update with a nice little feature of a time lapse. Um, and that's the same way you would go about doing any of the firmware updates that Atomos release on any of the models of screen that they do. Like I said before, it's always good to make sure you're running the latest firmware and upgrades to all the equipment that you've got, whether that's the camera or your Ninja 5 or your drone, whatever it might be. Make sure that everything's up to date and it's got all the latest fixes on it. So I hope you found this quick little video useful and getting yourself set up with the Ninja 5 and the time-lapse features so you can go and take advantage of that. Now you can go away and capture some nice silky ProRes time-lapses um, to use in your videos because that is something I want to start doing. I want to start using more time lapses in my videos to sort of add another dynamic, especially now I can do it in ProRes. That's a nice feature, so maybe I'll start doing that. But anyway, that's a whole other topic in itself, in it. So I will catch you in the next one.